Well, hello, hello, and happy Saturday to everybody. I hope everybody is having a great Saturday afternoon and a great weekend, as usual. My name is Don, and I want to welcome you to another great episode of The Color of Motion, where I like to say stories come in all shades. Um, and I highlight people of color and diverse backgrounds in the industry of motion graphics, animation, visual effects, cartoons, and comics. And we definitely have a great guest on that uh, falls into the ladder there, cartoons and comics. And so looking forward to sitting down and uh, chopping it up with my next guest for sure. You know the drill. Jump on, say hello. Uh, let me know where you're tuning in from. While, of course, I do uh, a little housekeeping and uh, make sure that we are broadcasting from all my channels there. Uh, if you are, uh, you're able to tune in. We're here every Saturday afternoon, of course, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. So, you know, and you're able to find me and the show on my LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook page. That's where you can check out the great episodes uh, that we have. Uh, if you are tuning in from uh, Facebook, you may need to give Facebook a permission or StreamYard permission to pull your uh, comment and your avatar from there. So if you do, just go to StreamYard.com backslash Facebook, uh, give StreamYard permission to pull your comments so I can show you a little love. But say hello, uh, say where you're tuning in from, and uh, let me know how your weekend is going so far. Uh, I seem to be broadcasting on LinkedIn. Okay, so let me make sure that everything is uh, as it should be on Facebook. Been working hard. Like I said, I'm super excited uh, to be sitting down with my next guest and friend here. Uh, so been looking forward to talking with him and diving into his story and uh, what the big project he's been working on. We're going to dive into that as well. Uh, again, you can uh, tune in from all my channels. If you do happen to be tuning in from uh, LinkedIn or fa Facebook, uh, I highly suggest that you go to my YouTube page and subscribe youtube.com backslash Don Terrell, where you can check out this episode and all the other great episodes that I've done so far and all the other great content that I plan on putting on the channel uh, as well. All right. Let's see. It looks like I am broadcasting. Yeah, my... Uh, like I said, I'm super, super, uh, as you know, I've been uh, dropping uh, little hints and everything and little updates uh, on the new format. Well, not format, but I like to say new studio uh, for the show. Um, and it's uh, coming, going to be coming and debuting really soon. And I'm really looking forward to it because it's the, the, Everything will be so much, much easier, so much faster, um, and much, much better. Excuse me. Much, much better. Okay. I seem to be uh, broadcasting from all my channels. Uh, so I'm super excited to uh, unveil that soon. I think I'm like maybe three, three, four more weeks out uh, before I uh, unveil the new studio. Uh, but everything is looking great. Everything is coming together nicely. And I'm uh, super pumped to unveil that to you as well. All right. We are good to go. Uh, all right. Again, make sure that uh, you uh, drop a comment. Say, hey, where are you tuning in from? And uh Please uh, get ready to have a great conversation with my friend here. All right. We are ready to go. 
All right. That without further, further ado, because I spent the last week, I mean, I must have wrote out a ton, ton of questions and stuff I wanted to ask him and go through, and which I know I'm not going to get halfway through all the stuff that I want to talk with him about, but just I fell in love with his uh, artwork uh, and saw his artwork and just immediately fell in love with it and said, I got to reach out and connect with uh, this brother. Um, and thankfully, uh, he connected with me and uh, got a chance to talk with him and agreed to be on the show. And like I said, it's just so excited and so happy that I can now call him friend. And like I said, really looking forward to this new project he's working on and, and really everything that he's doing. Because like I said, once you, and I'm going to show his, uh, uh, some of his work and a little video once we dive into it a little more. Mr. Brian, a little appreciate you as always, my friend, tuning in, uh, tuning in from LinkedIn. So I'm glad it's going across on LinkedIn as well. So I appreciate that, my uh, blockhead brethren, for sure. And like I said, you'll enjoy this because like I said, I know you're a comics, comics buff and cartoons buff. So you'll definitely enjoy uh, this episode for sure. So without further ado, uh, my next guest, your friendly neighborhood artist is an American illustrator and currently the creator and artist behind comic projects such as Tuskegee Airs and Supernatural. A longtime lover of video games, comic art, and all things animated. Man, after my own heart. He's dedicated his young artistic years to fine tuning his illustration muscles by way of freelancing. Over 15 years later, he's catching his stride and still ever growing in hopes of being a well rounded illustrator. Living in Atlanta, Georgia, he spends most of his time toiling away late nights on everything from illustrating children's book, comic art, to random character commissions and more. A proud father of two, which I'm not sure how he gets all the work done that he gets done. He somehow manages to steal enough time to create loads of artwork and check homework. He's excited about the direction of his comic, pro his comic properties are headed in and he looks forward to creating more forms of visual entertainment and stories to enjoy. Uh, everybody, please help me welcome my guest and my friend, uh, Mr. Marcus Williams. Mr. Marcus. What's going on with you? What's going on with you? <laughs> What's going on? What is going on, Marcus? Doing good, man. Doing good. Thank, oh, you, for the, thank you for the great introduction. And oh, man. Hey, look, hey. Making me feel special. <laughs> I make like all my guests feel special, but man, you're so dessert. I feel like we're twins here, man. <laughs> you got hats on. And as everybody can plainly see by the amazing artwork behind you, you are a super, super talented uh, Thank you. comic artist. And like I said, I immediately saw your work and just said, I got to connect with them. I got to connect with them. And so I'm so appreciative. Uh, and I told you this before. So appreciative that one, you accepted my connection request. <laughs> and two, that uh, you agreed to be on the show and part of the Color of Motion family. So I thank Most you. Stuff. Thank you, brother. Most stuff. Thank, thank you for reaching out, man. It's, um, uh, it's, it's always a pleasure to at least um, share. I guess it's, you know, why I do what I do, because, again, I, I was just having a great conversation before I got on. You never know who you can impact. Um, you never know what if you share your inspirations or the reasons you do something, someone could literally be waiting to be like, oh, OK, cool. You know, that's what I was waiting to hear. Or that's no one. I, I've never heard that perspective before. Or, yeah. it, it's you never know. You just never know. So I, I, I love at least sharing the madness that goes on up here and why I do it. <laughs> so it's it's a pleasure, man. Thank you for reaching out. You know, let's chop let's chop it up. Let's chop it up. Let's chop yeah. it up. Like I said, you're you're a, you're a brother after my own heart, man. I just I love 
comics, cartoons, and just everything animated. Yeah. And so, I mean, I know how I was kind of growing up as a kid. What were you like kind of growing up as a kid? Oh, man. Uh, well, see, and, and I have to start by dispelling the concept of talent in me. And, and everyone tries to push back. I'm like, no, you just don't understand. I love drawing for as long, early as I can remember. I just wasn't good at it. Mm -hmm. I was not blessed with any talent. There was no natural skill. I was not adept at drawing. Uh, my brother chronicled all of my levels and, you know, <laughs> states that he used to say how terrible I was. He's like, why can't you draw better? I'm like, hey, I'm seven. Just give me a second. You know, I'm, I'm going to get there. But um, he tries to take credit now. He's like, if I didn't tell you how bad you were, you never would have got good. I was like, nah, that's not how, that's not how it works. But uh, no, I love video games. Um, I loved cartoons. I loved animated stuff. You know, Disney used to have these late night specials and, you know, yeah. I rallied to the TV. And I actually loved the behind the scenes stuff that they would oh, show, yeah. the making yeah. of the cartoon. So you got to see it in production and see all the rough pencils. Um, and I, I remember wanting to like snap my fingers and be like, man, I want to draw like that. I just want to draw like that. Um, I didn't get my first comic until a neighboring kid um, right, that was uh, right up the street. Was like, oh man, he was talking about Wolverine. I'm like, who's Wolverine? Why do you keep saying that? And he was like, flapping. I see. He was like, what? You don't know who Wolverine is? I was like, nah. Now nah, who's that? And I mean, he brought over comics. He brought over um, uh, uh, an X Men comic that was drawn by Jim Lee at the time, and it was it was the cover that had Wolverine and Omega Red split down the middle. Yeah, uh, and uh, that was my first Wolverine comic, and I'm just like, so you telling me this dude has, you know, blades come out of his hand. He has a healing factor. He's, you know, uh, 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 you know, good at fighting. And this, I'm like, this it blew my mind. So it was the concept, not only the artistic side, but the concepts that I had never played a video game that was about somebody like that. I'd never seen a cartoon. That was, and of course, not long after. X-Men, the animated series comes on TV yeah. and I'm like, watch out, watch <laughs> out, everybody move. And, you know, I, would, I was religiously in front of that cartoon. So it was like being introduced to a, a printed character, a comic character, and then shortly after getting to see a cartoon. And, you know, this was, you know, there's no internet back then. You couldn't know that this was happening. Yeah. But um, yeah, I came in right around that time into comics. I, and I knew about Superman, I knew about Spider-Man, but I didn't read their comics yeah, or anything. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, fast forward, um, I got my hands on as many comics as I can get. I, I was there when Spawn came out. I was in high school mm -hmm. um, at the time and I tried to draw like that. I tried to draw like all these other styles. And then um, Joe Matt, Joe Matarera yeah. uh, started drawing for X-Men. And that I think impacted me the most style wise and the energy, like trying to, he, he married two different energies, you know, uh, anime energy and Western yeah. comics. And he put that in one and that again, a whole new level of, it's like watch. And I like to uh, compare art to martial arts because there's different styles, right? To martial arts and you can, emulate or imitate a style, but you may not master it like someone else that has dedicated their life to just that style or yes, just yes. that energy, yes. right? But I think that's what I studied the longest comic art wise was Joe Mann. Mm. And that dude is still, I've, I haven't met him in person per se, but he's I, you know commented on some stuff online and that's like a, a Bruce Lee to me yeah. And I'm like, dude, shut up, stop lying. You don't got to say <laughs> nice things about my art. But that's, yeah, that's where I guess the comic side of me started to really round out. And I was graduating high school at the time. And, uh, my first job was really, really lucky. I landed, uh, well, I got I to gotta frame it. So I was working at the movie theaters after high school. And, uh, you know, a, a young lady that I went to high school with, she comes up to the booth and she's like, hey, Marcus, you still drawing? I'm like, hey, yeah, I'm still drawing. I'm just working at the movie theater to get some money. Um, you know, and she was like, you need to meet my my uncle. 
Now that's a really weird thing to say to an adult man. Why do I need to meet your uncle? He's <laughs> like, she's like, well, he's the art director at this company called Cartoon Network. I was like, you oh, know what? Man. Yeah, I get off at three. Yeah, let's go meet your let's go meet your uncle tonight. <laughs> and we actually did. Like as soon as I got off, literally wow. drove, met met her uncle. He is the art director. Looked at my little sketchbook, my little tattered sketchbook. I didn't have anything professional. I was like eighteen at the time, so yeah, yeah. It, it, that rolled into me getting some freelance work for Cartoon Network. I was drawing wow. Power, Powerpuff Girls comic pages. I got no credit for, it, but I got a lot of money. So <laughs> that gift is nice, I tell you. Man, right. man, that is, you know, it's amazing how some things just kind of work out. Yeah. Uh, that, it was, that's not normal. Oh. I don't want anyone else to hear that story and think that that's normal. <laughs> yeah, because I, I I went on to marry that young lady and. You know, oh wow! Okay. Yeah, probably, yeah. I was I was married for fourteen years. That wow. that's not normal to do unless you <laughs> like snipe and, and stalk someone's. You know. Oh man, yeah. and, and you kind of touched the point. You, you touched upon a few things, a few of the questions that I, you know, it kind of was going to ask. Um, one, yeah. uh, the fact that, like I said, when I saw your work, you have a, you had a very unique style and almost, and I think I had even mentioned this when we were talking, um, when we first connected, almost kind of that, uh, boondock style where it was slightly animate, like I said, this mesh between animation and traditional, uh, comic art, um, yeah. Like I said, do you feel like um, that's where you kind of came in your own kind of style when you came across Joe's work? That's when it crystallized for you. That's what your style is. No, no, because Joe, that's like you can, there's people that can look at my art and they can see the Joe's influence in certain places. But I, I actually, on purpose, don't try to emulate yeah. Joe Madureira's work. Um, I highly, highly, highly respect it. I studied his work and tried to draw exactly like him. But if you think about it again, take the martial arts analogy. You walk into a, a martial arts studio today. I want to learn Kung Fu. I want to learn Karate, right? Yeah. The teacher is going to say, great. You know, show me what you can do. Here, they're gonna, you're going to probably do a punch. They're probably going to tell you it's wrong. Right, and then he's going to show you how to do a punch, and how to do a kick, and how to do striking, and how to do all these things, the concepts and the, the mentality of it all, right? And you're going to, in repetition, emulate what they're showing you until yeah. you actually get their approval to say, all right, cool, now you can move to the next step. So while Joe wasn't my teacher in person, that's how I, I had to reverse engineer line character anatomy, uh, action scenes, poses, all of the stuff that he was doing in the books, I was trying to emulate and say, okay, like this, oh, okay, I got it. But that's, that was the tutelage part, that was my academia part of mm. how to draw comics. But style-wise, um, that's his style. And he's, he's famous for it. I don't wanna be known for yeah. being a imitation of Joe. Yeah. So I learned, and this is honestly what Bruce Lee did as well. I learned his methods and his styles and as best as I could. I can actually draw like Joe if I put my mind to it. Yeah. I, you know, I studied him long enough, and at this point in my skill set, you know, it's like a, you you take a a, a jazz player, uh, and and you have someone say kind of like this, you know, they'll do some scat, and the jazz player will be like, okay, I got it, you know, and start playing. That's where I'm, I'm at in my illustration career. So you can show me something and say, uh, can, you, can you do a portrait of someone? So that's, that's the Chadwick and that's Eddie Murphy yeah. from Coming to America back there. I can absolutely render what you show me. Um, like you said, with Boondocks though, that style was created for that cartoon yeah, and, and you know it brought together. And there's not and the only reason some people will look at uh, Tuskegee Airs and the style that I created, which is supposed to be animated and comic at the same time. Um, I said, "Oh, that's kind of like Boondocks." That's the only reference they have for a successful, yeah, you know, cartoon yeah. animated series that had more than three black main characters on yeah. purpose. So yeah. it's okay, yeah. and you know I'm like I understand why you 
why they would say that. But no, that's not my style um, is not one thing. I can actually take from all of my influences, animation, comics, um, character design from video games and, and anything else. As I've studied all these mediums, now I can pull together one or more and combine them into something. I can make a comic animated, you know, uh, 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 you know, style. I can make any style as I choose. I can, yeah. you know, I combined uh, portrait art with that with that shot with you know T'Challa and uh, yeah. Akeem. But then I pulled in comic aesthetic as well, which is to say, well, what if Akeem had his own power suit yeah. in in Zamunda, right? Yeah. And yeah. so that's that's an example of that. That's someone would say, oh man, I love your style, but that's two different styles that I'm pulling from: portrait art and comic art. Comic art, guys. Yeah, to, yeah, Tuskegee is his animation and comic art, and a little bit of you know some 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 mound flair in there. But style okay. as it is to me now is everything that I've I've learned, and what am I trying to convey? Gotcha, gotcha. Now you said your brother really kind of helped, kind of <laughs> helped you out a little. How are your uh, parents? He, he, <laughs> he, he just he just he literally just you know said I wasn't good. And that's that's the best as it could call you. Yeah. Well, but how well how are your parents um uh influential or uh just inspiring or motivating for you to nurture your skills and talent? Um I had a I had my mom, she was a single mother, uh she had four boys. I'm the youngest of four boys. Okay. So um, she she was nurturing in the sense because she had to work a lot. You know, she had to work, but she it's weird because, you know, my mom didn't come up. At, she was she was the second oldest out of eight boys. She was the only girl out of eight boys. And I had to put the psychology to it in hindsight. My mom, you know, couldn't afford to be. Or she couldn't afford to be that, you know, oh, baby, you know, come and I'm so proud of you. Like she she was raised in a, an environment that was kind of like boot camp. Right. Yeah. And so she had to be like a second mom as a child. So with all boys and her being the only girl, you know, it was probably not easy to be that nurturing soft type. Right. So she didn't yeah. come out. I don't think she came out as a tomboy. She didn't talk about that. But. You know, she had to survive in, in that atmosphere, which was do what I say, or you know, you're gonna get jacked up. <laughs> so, you know, my mom was wonderful. Uh, as a single parent, she nurtured and gave, you know, bought sketchbooks, I had paper, I had pencils, uh, I had toys, I had video games, I had all these yeah. things that I didn't have to want for. And in hindsight, like, you know, even her working, I had my older brothers to watch me while she was at work, but I would show her the drawings when she came home. Like, look, ma, and she was like, oh, that's nice, baby. Did you clean your room? <laughs> yes, ma'am, I did, I did. She's like, all right, all right, well, go ahead. Uh, let me get situated and that's real nice. Go sit down, right? And it was, it was, I didn't take it as a hurtful thing. Yeah, yeah, it's but, just how she was. You know, and, and now I'm like, man, she, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work uh, that she had to do. And I've seen, uh, like my business partner, I, I said, I'm jealous, of, I'm jealous of his mom. His mom has like come to Comic Cons and sat down at the table and helped us vend and stuff. I'm like, don't you ever say nothing bad about your mom. She's amazing. And I want to trade your son status so I can be her son. So, you know, sometimes she's, you know, super, super supportive. She's very yeah, yeah. openly, yeah, you know, accolades and baby, I'm so proud of you and stuff. Uh, and I'm like, that's awesome. That's awesome. My mom didn't, you know, that's not her personality. Type. Yeah, yeah. She, you know, like she, yeah, she's like, how much you get paid for it? I was like, ma, <laughs> it's my book. I made it. So no one had to pay me for it. Oh, okay. Oh man! Well, I can say, kind of sounds like well, while, while she was supportive, I don't yeah. think she necessarily got where it would go or where it would take me. No, and it's, uh, she's from I, that other generation. She's from yeah, that other yeah, generation, yeah. you know, that kind of generation as well. Right. So no, I did. So was I mean, outside of video games and comic yeah. art, were there 
interest of yours outside of art that you enjoy oh, yeah. doing for like what other things outside of art do you think kind of really you know made you a much well-rounded person yeah so that movie recently i'll, I'll reference the uh, soul uh pixar yeah. movie so that just came yeah. out um i like the movie as a, as a foundational piece i think they did a great job with the concepts of it the the heart of that movie spoiler is that you know that 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 the, uh, the main character um, thinks that being a piano player is his purpose. Yeah. Right. When he gets everything lined up and he gets what he thought would be his dream, you know, he's disappointed because he's like, well, I thought it would feel better. I thought this would be more. Um, and I, that hit home with me. Like people think that I'm just an artist and I'm like, I know intimately that I'm not just an artist. I do art because it's quick and it's cheap. You know, I, I don't have to buy a new set of canvases and paints and yeah. brushes when I want to create digitally. Um, and I could get my idea out there. I can share it. I can get feedback. It's quick. It's easy. It's yeah. cheap. And then I can reproduce it for cheap as well. Yeah. So, but that is not, I'm actually a creative, um, creative person in terms, like I, I as a kid, I loved inventing. Um, I, I don't know if you ever did this. So, you know, the light switch, I was, I got the top bunk cause I lost the, I, I would always get voted out cause I was the youngest. But, um, so we slept in bunk beds, me and my brother. And so they would always tell me to, you know, go turn the light off. And I'm like, I'm, I'm on the top bunk. Why you're on the bottom. You just go do it. <laughs> right. And, uh, they're like, nah, you do it. And I'm like, ah. So I literally tied some, I, I begged my mom for some fishing string. Cause I was like, there can't just be regular string. I got the fishing string. And she was like, why, why do you want fishing string? I was like, please mama, please. And uh, wrapped some fishing string, taped them with some duct tape. And I literally had these little uh, screws with the little loops in them. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I, and I made this whole contraption that went from my bunk top bunk bag to all I had to do was pull it. I had a GI Joe, man. All I had to do was pull the GI Joe and it would pull the light switch up or down. Right? Now it didn't last because I was a very amateur, you know, uh <laughs> inventor at the time. But that was like the top of the world. When I did that, when I debuted my invention for the first time, that was everything to me. Cause they was like, turn the light off, Marcus. I was like, no problem. <laughs> no, no. And they was like, what yeah, they was like, what did you do? I was like, Nothing. Just turn the light off. Uh, but yeah, it was. I, I love inventing. I love problem solving creatively. Um, I love video games to the point where I want to make games. I went to school briefly for okay. game art, and de game art and design. Yeah. Um, I didn't finish college, but that's absolutely where I want to go. Um, so programming and coming up with, uh, you know, different types of tools and, and, and uh, entertainment. I think it's definitely part of who I am. So, yeah, yeah. you know, growing up, that's why I was addicted to video games. I, yeah. I, I played the game for what it was, but it, in my mind, I saw it in layers. So I saw that the visual aesthetic was beautiful. I love the art that it took to do that. But I'm like, how in the world did they create this? If you press a button and the character jumps and swings a sword or shoots a gun. And yeah. in my young mind, I'm like, how? It's magic. I want to do that. Yeah. Um, so. Now, like I said, you 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 just echo so much of how I kind of grew up. Like I said, I'm the youngest of ten, so Ooh. yeah, I'm the youngest. Of 10. And, uh, I have to give a shout out to my uh, sister there, Jordan. Right. <laughs> That's my sister. Yeah, the youngest of ten, and wow. I slept in triple triple beds. So I was the, we slept in triple beds. Fortunately, I wasn't on the bottom; I was in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> but just like I said, you think of, I was just that creative type myself yeah. and always, you know, kind of either in my own world with my toys or trying to invent this or come up with that or just uh, that kind of mindset. So that's why, like I said, I really resonate with how you how you grew up and how, you you know, everything that you're thinking and thought as a cat, as a kid. Uh, so you didn't necessarily take training or formal uh classes for your art you went for game design and everything that you do artistically drawing wise is just natural what you've learned and and practiced over the years well 
before I went to college, I, I was already, like, I'd already freelanced for Cartoon Network. Before I went yeah, to college, right. um, I, I'd, I was drawing to a level that I could at least render, you know, clean artwork and, and you know, proper artwork before I went to college. Yeah. So I was, I was already freelancing. Um, I went to college uh, to learn, oddly enough, in hindsight now, uh, <laughs> Illustrator, Adobe, Adobe Illustrator. Yeah, yeah. Someone was like, uh, you need to learn Illustrator. I was like, why? And like, that's the professional and you got to get, I was like, okay, well, I'll go learn Illustrator, I guess. So I did graphic, uh, graphic art and design. That was my major. They didn't have all the cool stuff when I went. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they didn't have sequential art just yet. I would have did that if they would have had that. Um, but then they, they added game art and design while I was doing that, so that you know, that major. And I was like, oh, screw this major. I'm going to go with game art and design because I want to make games. Yeah. So, uh, but I got a lot of the core. I did learn Adobe Illustrator while I was there. But, um, yeah, it was literally just to understand some software um, training. And I was hopefully gonna, I was hoping to get into 3D animation and 3D art and all that good mm -hmm. stuff. I, I had friends that were doing that. So I was excited about that. So, um, but yeah, I, I, there was no formal training. If that's to answer you, to clarify, no one taught me how to draw formally. Yeah. To revert, and I don't like to say I'm so, excuse me, I don't like to say self taught because yeah. in, in my definition, that means you're in a vacuum. There is no inspiration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you just, yeah, yeah, you just like closed off the blinds yeah. and you're in a room and I, yeah. I'm going to figure out what line means and I'm going to figure out what shape yeah. means. No, yeah. I, I reverse engineered everything I know about, you know, uh, or all of the things that, and now that was in high school, uh, during high school in my 11th grade year, I got to do something here in Georgia. They have a program. I don't know if they still have it. It's called Governor's Honors. And what it was, was a program that highlighted students in high school that said, if you are excelling at one thing, we're going to give you an opportunity to go to a college campus for six weeks and be taught respectively by a professor in that discipline or that, that field of expertise. So they had it for every, every uh, extracurricular tip, you know, thing that you could think of, math, science, whatever. Mine was art, obviously. So I actually won the competition for my county here in Gwinnett oh. County. Um, and I got to go and, and learn art for six weeks at a campus in Valdosta, Georgia. So everything I know about art, I thought I was doing pretty good. The, the teacher there, and I cannot for the life of me find who this woman was. I didn't, I can't remember her name, but she was an older lady. She wore sandals every day, had Coke bottle glasses. She was like, draw something. And I was like, okay, cool. And as soon as I put my hand on, you know, the paper to draw, she's like, that's, you're doing it wrong. I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, yeah, you're doing it wrong. And I'm drawing, I'm like, I'm best artist in my class. What are you talking about? <laughs> and she's like, no, you're doing it wrong. And she, she said, okay, first off, you know, hold your pencil like this. I was like, huh? Like this? She's like, yeah. And she said, step away from your drawing. And we got up on some easels. And for one week, this lady absolutely broke down everything I thought I knew about drawing and art and sketching. And she, you know, rebuilt the way I draw from scratch. And I'm still drawing based on what she taught me for one week. Now, my arm was sore because she had us drawing on easels uh, like this yeah, with, yeah. With, with vine charcoal. Yeah. It's very delicate. If you press too hard, it'll break. Right. So, we could, you know, we were, she was, you know, it was this crash course on how to properly sketch and draw and build a draw, uh, capturing the essence of something. And yeah. we were like, what does that mean? And then she showed us. It was like watching a Jedi do, use the force because she looked, she was like, stop looking at your page. There's no information there. She's like, only the only reason you should look at your page is to check and then go back to your content. We're like, that's impossible. And she did it like right in front of us. The model was over here. Yeah. And she was doing this. And she turned and then started looking at the model and finished the drawing. We was like, that's that's witchcraft. There's no way. Wow. Uh, but but at the end of the week, we were all doing that. So yeah, it was yeah. it was pretty phenomenal. So do you feel like that's something every kind of artist or or aspiring artist should do? Take those kind of classes, like life drawing kind of classes, to really get a foundational, uh, uh, a great foundation of drawing and being able to draw and not look at what you're drawing. Or not look at the paper 
and look at what you're drawing. Oh, well, to put it in perspective, what she taught us was absolutely imperative to understanding mastery of drawing, mastery of line, mastery of, you know, different ways to build imagery. It's not the only way. Um, but for her and what she taught me, it literally reverse engineered. So now I can draw something and I, if, you know, if you want me to share the screen before we, before we end, yeah, I can give you an example. Yeah, I can give you an example. I can sketch something within 30 seconds and you can understand what it is, even though it, it may look messy and there's lines everywhere because of that training. Um, I can now sketch 10, you know, uh, character poses in a manner of minutes, right? To get what feels best, which, which of these sketches feel best versus spending an hour trying to get one right, right? And that's what I was doing before that class. I would take time, I would go slow and say, oh, it's not right, and erase, erase, erase. Yeah, she was yeah. like, she, she, we didn't have erasers. She was like, draw, <laughs> she was like draw, through the, draw through the mistake, move the line, it's like, what does that even mean? What are you talking about? But because, you know, uh, what I would suggest is that if you're if you're aspiring to understand art and drawing or any any element, let's say sculpture, whatever it is, yeah, literally being a pupil from someone that has spent thirty plus years doing that thing is going to streamline and or hopefully, if they're a good teacher, be able to show you practically. The skills that they they have mastered, and then teach you incrementally how to build that because you still have to practice. Yeah, but they can at least introduce you to the tools and or the answers that they've now cultivated over thirty plus years of doing that thing. So I think that's honestly that's what I would suggest to anybody if you can afford it, if you can do it. Granted, I got I, I, got, I have to say lucky in the sense that I I was chosen out of thousands of students. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even want to go. My teacher forced me to do this do this competition, and I thanked her for it because it did change <laughs> me as an artist. But I yeah. really didn't. I, I thought I was good, and you know I could draw, but I was like, eh, why do I want to go there? You know, yeah. but mess up my mess up my son's vacation. I could be out playing video games. <laughs> but you know, to this day, I'm like, if I can't, I don't. I hope she's still alive. She was yeah. already older in age, but. She absolutely changed my perspective on line drawing and how to build quickly yeah. concepts. Yeah. So I would suggest, yes, get formally trained by someone that has made that career their lifetime work, because they're gonna be able to kind of you know spread apart all of the all the pitfalls and all of the noise and say, here's what you need. And in six weeks, it's not a long time. Yeah. Uh, actually, I only had one week with her, one week, and my arm was sore. Like I said, when I was done. But she was a great teacher. She was able to literally say, "Do this like yeah. this, and you'll get better." So get better. Get better. Yeah. So, are you the type of of, of artist, uh, illustrator, um, that has to draw every day? No, no, I don't. I don't. So again, I'm not just an artist. I well, love I mean, creativity <laughs> in all forms. Yeah. So drawing is is therapeutic and meditative for me. I don't always have to meditate per se to be creative. So I can, I, 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 me just being in my head is fun for me. And that's hard for a lot of extroverts that know me. They're like, come on, man, let's go out. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> if you want me to go pay to go be in somewhere, I don't like the music, I don't drink. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I also don't dance. So it seems a little uh, unnecessary. I get socialization, but eh, it's a little, it's too much extra work. Um, but I don't have to draw per se to yeah. feel like I'm being creative. creative. It's a really, really good way to crystallize concept, to see it and say, yeah, like that. That's what I was thinking. But think about it, think about it in this term. Um, to draw something means I have to now render what I've been thinking about and what's already cool up here. I yeah. enjoy it up here. But when I draw, I'm challenging my ability to control line, shape, color and find a cool way to present it on, a, I guess, a page, if you want to say, yeah. digital page, whatever, and then present that to someone else to yeah. hopefully see if they get it. Yeah. It was cool up here. I was already entertained, but drawing it means I have to now put in effort to render it, which I enjoy, but yeah. I don't have to. Yeah. So in saying that, 
have you never had to deal with just uh, a mental block or uh, say like how some other artists deal with imposter syndrome feeling like they can't do this or not able to get this done? Have you, do you still deal with that or, or are you able to at least manage and control it? Um, yeah, with, with oh, absolutely. You learn. I still deal with it, but I've, I've found a ways um, using online tools now, man, uh, Pinterest, Pinterest. So for me, this is a work for me. Um, being able to cycle through and scroll through other art, other artists' work that have solved creative solution. What, they solved that problem. Yeah. They obviously did the work, so they posted it. But being able to cycle through just endless yeah. endless, you know, artists work and be like, so for my brain, seeing something that sparks, I just need a jump start. If I'm if I'm not feeling like oh, I don't know where to start right now. And I'm and I'm not looking at the art to say I'm gonna draw what I see. Yeah. I can look at a sketch that has motion in it and say, Oh yeah, stupid motion. You forgot about that. That's a thing. Yeah. You should add that and that'll help me to jump start. Oh sweet. Or I never thought about that perspective. Uh, you know, uh, a bug's eye perspective or this kind yeah. of composition. I've never thought about doing that. That's amazing. Let me sketch something based on that. That solves it for me. Just knowing that uh, being able to see someone else solve these problems, I'm like, ah, oh, creativity. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, good. Um, and I guess a musician would be like, you know, going into different arenas and listening to other music. Yeah. Uh, I was listening to somebody uh, talk about Prince. And he went into, uh, no, it was uh, Arsenio Hall was talking about he they, they went into some after hours clubs and stuff and Prince would just be vibing on the music. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm just like, yeah, like that. Like he can create music, but he's taking in stimulus and saying, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, interesting. And so do you feel like uh, that's kind of a hang up of a lot of uh say younger artists or even some artists that get caught up in like looking at the work, oh man, I can't do that or or just getting kind of intimidated by what they there's a lot of impressive work out there. Like either you can go to art station and just sit and scroll through stuff for hours, whether it's 3D, 2D or whatnot. And I'm like, holy macro, how do you say, you know, create something like that? Do you think that's where a lot of uh, the hang up is for people really kind of going past that and really getting into their own. The only, the only reason I would say it's a hang up for anyone looking at, and I've, I've talked to these people, I've actually heard that perspective like, Oh man, you make me want to stop drawing. I don't get that because I know how to draw. Um, or I understand how to reverse engineer uh, or be inspired. When I look at art, I'm looking for inspired. how did you do that? Yeah. Wow. I and I'm and people don't believe me. Listen, I'm gonna say it's skin. I'm learning, I'm training myself how to color still to this day. Any artwork you see where I, I have to color, but when I say that, I'm talking about there's there's digital artists and painters and everything that pick colors. Their color palettes are out of this world to me. Yeah. I'm like, I would never choose that color ever. Yeah. But when I look at someone else's work and I'm like, wow. Marcus, you need to start using that color. Try that. So it inspires and challenges me. I, and again, so if you're a martial artist and you, you're looking at another martial artist exhibit what they can do, it's not supposed to make you feel defeated. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to say, wow, that's exciting. I've never done a roundhouse kick like that before. Yeah. I'm going to try to incorporate. Let me see if I can do that. You know, yeah. And that's how I process it. So but if you're if that artist is not skilled, they don't have their the handle on skill yet. They're still trying to learn how to draw. Then it can be defeating. And this is why I don't I don't uh, do art challenges for little kids. Um, defeating someone who or basically pitting someone against other people based on skill, especially yeah. at a young age. If you're going through. And you're seeing other skilled artists and you, you see that as competition yeah. versus I need to learn how they did that. Then that can absolutely shut you down. Kids yeah. shut down quickest, in my opinion, because I've seen that shut down. 
the kid will look at, you know, a whole class of kids around them drawing and say, well, I can't do it. I can't do it like they're doing. So I don't want to try. Yeah. I just quit. Yeah. And they'll, they'll emotional and everything. So I've seen kids start tearing up. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't have to draw like they do. Yeah. But let's, you know, understand it's okay to be where you are and just try. You're going to get better if you keep trying. Right. And they're like, yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> okay. You, you got to keep trying. I, I said, keep, it, it. keep doing the, it. The weirdest thing, the weirdest thing to me that I, I keep hearing all the time is I've heard people say, well, I tried to draw once and I was terrible at it. I was like, and then what? <laughs> you you didn't try again? Oh, yeah. It's like, no. Nah. Yeah. I was like, that's not how it works. I said, if you sit there at a piano for the first time, are you going to be able to play Mozart? Or not, you know, and they're like, probably not. Yeah. So you practice, but you don't practice in a short amount of time and get to that. You have to literally span that out for years. Or if you're adept at it, you'll probably be better than yeah. most, but you still got to practice. So that's where I'm like, nah, it, it doesn't work like that. The weird thing is that people think art is either you got it or you don't. Yeah. And I still don't understand why that flies because it's the furthest from the truth. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I've yeah. I've got that a lot too. Oh well, you got a talent for it. Well, you know, I sat Drew. I sat Drew. I mean, you know, like anybody, you, you, you do it enough, you get better at it. You know, you get better. And, and you got to fall in love with practice. If yeah. you have to be passionate about improvement and seeing it and framing it that way, uh, otherwise it's it's busy work, I guess, or it's like, you know, you, what are you doing it for if you're not passionate about it? Yeah. And there's, I've known kids that have been forced to play an instrument by their parents. They get good at it, but they hate doing it. Hate doing it. Yeah. They hate doing it. Yeah, for sure. And I'm going to throw up uh, some of uh, Marcus's work. Like I said, you do amazing, amazing uh, illustrative it. style. Um, and just, I love it. Um, for sure. um, Again, do you, and you said you love animation as well. Is that kind of where you kind of like, and we're going to dive more into your, your project, Tuskegee Airs, as you can see a mm -hmm. little more, but is animation just another piece in your creative toolbox that you just love and would love to get into doing? Yeah, I mean, I see animation as like, um, I used to want to be an animator. As a young artist, I thought that's what I wanted to be. What I found out after uh, after actually seeing the behind the scenes of how many drawings it takes to animate something, that's not the kind of artist I am. And I'm okay with that. I was just like, oh, so it takes 500 drawings to do. Oh, man. This much. <laughs> so worse than that. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I was like, I don't want to be an animator. However, I, I know how to animate. I actually highly respect animators. Yeah, that's not what feeds my. Cre that's not my. Yeah. I'm not that type of artist. I am a. Cons I'm a character yeah. designer by yeah. trade. That's what excites me. I didn't even know that until my mid twenties. Until someone said, "Wow, how long have you been a character designer?" I was like, "Well, I think I'm just an illustrator." I was like, "No, I mean you illustrate, but you're a character designer. Look at your portfolio." And I see started flipping through, and it was character, character, character. I was like. I never thought of it that way. Okay, then. Yes, yeah. uh, I guess I've been a character designer for a while, well, but that's that's what I am. That's what excites me about drawing. If you look at my my Instagram feed, Facebook, whatever, yeah. that's primarily right. what you see is characters. So, um, yeah, that's that's what uh, has kept me drawing, and that's exciting for me. So that's why I do it. They, you know, as much yeah, as I do yeah. because well, it's I think fun. a lot of I think a lot of it, of artists or, or just creatives, like I said, and I tell people this when you're just getting into animation. Yeah. Oh, they they think they want to you know animate, and then they get in there. Oh no, I like modeling, and and there's like you said, you once you get into it, you really do find out what you like and what you really kind of don't like, or just I don't have the patience to say you got you got to love animation you know, to be it, to be it, an animator and be passionate about it. You have to love the end product so much um, or the process. Maybe you love the process, um, but that's the stuff where I'm like, oh, oh no, 
<laughs> I don't. I, this isn't fun anymore. Right? I've, I've drawn twenty drawings of this same character, and I've gotten less than a second. So, oh, man. Hey, yeah. and, and like I said, and I, and I love, like I said, I love. I'm kind of like you. I'm a, I'm a creative, and I just love, just everything creative. It doesn't, oh, yeah. doesn't even have to be an art. It could be photography. It could be sculpture. Yeah. But just the idea of whatever it is in your head. Um, but I love like, and, like as a, as a as a toolbox. I can say like you you mentioned. How do I use so animation as an inspirational toolbox for me or tool? Yeah, is Japanese anime mm -hmm. is by far the most. Gosh, man, um, I want to say creative or inventive mm -hmm. medium because of they saw visual problems for animation that's hard to replicate. You know, it's not cheap. To, to replicate the kind of work they do. Yeah. They throw animators at it. They throw people that are passionate about that same style and so forth. So I, I see Tuskegee Airs as animated, but I want it to feel authentically yeah. like Japanese uh, animation because, yeah. well, we haven't seen that except yeah. for what they did in the Boondocks. LaShawn Thomas was the character, yeah. one of the character artists on that project. He's heavily influenced by Japanese animation. Yeah, if you see, you see this, you see uh, Yoseki, um, awesome, awesome work. And yeah. like I said, and if you've seen um, uh, Black Afro Samurai, just amazing, amazing. Uh, yeah. uh, like I said, my my, I love it all. I can, yeah. I love the the Disney Pixar kind of animation. I just appreciate and love just what goes into it and the fact that even in the simplistic form, you're able to tell a very compelling story or visual um, uh, from it. Uh, yeah. and, and I use this as an example on a couple of, of past episodes. If you haven't seen it, you ought to check it out because it's just amazing. Plus he's got a behind the scenes of it as well. But uh, Ryan Woodard's uh, thought of you video and it's just it's just two D drawing it's just sketches uh, of two dancers to a, a song. Oh yeah, um, but it's just amazing, amazing work and even it's it's simplistic of form. Um, and that took he was saying I think like over a hundred thousand drawings and I'm like okay. Yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. See, that's why I was like, hey man, I don't think I want to do this as a career, but I respect those people because it takes passion, dedication. You got to shun your family for a while. It's a lot of work, man. Uh, which brings me to my point. You have two, yeah. two, two kids. Yeah. How do you balance the time of, of raising kids and creating artwork? I mean, is it, it's a lot. It's a lot yeah. of to put to do that. Okay, so after after I got divorced, um, my I got divorced and my kids were in uh, pre K and kindergarten. So um, I got to move. Uh, I moved back in with my mom. Uh, she was taking care of my oldest brother. He had a uh, frontal lobe dementia at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was a reset for me to actually say, "Well, Ma, I can help you out, and you can help me out." with you know the babies cuz I want to have to rebuild my career and start doing this stuff but I've been I've been you know raising my babies uh since then man uh they are teenagers now uh, my daughter's in ninth grade my son's in eighth grade um teenagers you know luckily I'm saying all that to preface that I got to make uh, they picked up a lot of my template of who I am which is I can be in a zone in my in my space, I made sure that they could be in theirs. Like uh, when they were little, they was trying to run and you know come from upstairs in their playroom to come mess with my play in my work zone. I was like, ah, what you supposed to do? come on up, wrong zone. Let's get back in your play space. Daddy gonna have and we had times for everything. So um, I I have I think I trained them to be uh, very chill. They but they both draw. Um, I, yeah, I got them uh, iPads and Procreate. They both love video games and, you know, uh, I guess collecting information. They can be in their zones peacefully. If I don't make them eat, they won't. They won't. It's the strangest thing in the world. I'm like, don't, don't you want, I mean, thank you for saving me money, but go eat because you have to. And uh, I don't want to be held responsible as an abusive father. 
<laughs> but no, that's super chill, man. I love love my kids' energy. They they picked a lot of it up. I think subconsciously, just by seeing how I, I'm seeing my energy throughout the day. I'm not one of those parents. I'm not. I'm, I'm not like my mom. My mom is allergic to to anyone not doing something. You know. Uh, so she's. You know. She'll interrupt that energy. Like get up. Go do this. Go clean that. Go yeah, do that. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, listen. I'll check in. Hey, baby. How you doing? Good. Got that homework. All right. Do you need a shower? Good. All right. All right. And I love you. I'm going to be downstairs. And hours go by, and I have to literally yell at them, go eat. But they're really, really chill. Um, I think they picked up a lot of my personality traits. So it it's easier. Like yeah, it's easier for me as a, as a single father to literally just, um, you know, we do take moments and breaks to go walk sometimes, or, or we'll watch anime together. We'll watch movies together. Yeah. Things like that. Uh, but they're they're easy, man. I love my I love uh, I love my kids for what they are. Hopefully, they can maintain that in this crazy world. But yeah, yeah. And you know, like you said, whatever it is, I'm 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 assuming you're know, like most parents. Whatever it is, they so choose to, you know, go down the path of, yeah. that they want to, um, that they just have a passion for it. Absolutely, know? absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I didn't force drawing on them. Um, I did expose them to it, and I got them all the tools they need if they want to. At this point, though, I said, y'all ain't, ain't going to work for Chick-fil-A. Y'all going to be running this table with me or packing up some posters or starting their own T-shirt or, you know, print company. You them in the entrepreneurial yeah. world. Oh, yeah. There's no way. There's no way I'm supporting uh, working for nobody for eight hours, getting paid some pennies. No. You're going to come and work this convention. Uh, sell your posters, get your money. I'm gonna pay you if you're working for me. And no, we we you know build out your your creative, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. entrepreneur you know thing. And it, yeah, there's I can't. I, I did it. And what I learned from working from others is yes, you do need consistency. You do have to have discipline. Yeah. You do have to actually you know meet a schedule. However, however, uh, you know you're doing that to build someone else's dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole time. The whole time. Yeah. Uh, even if you move up in the ranks of their dream, you will never, you're not supposed to bypass them. Yeah. And if you do, you'll probably be 68 because yeah. they don't want you to move too fast while they're, you know, while they're being elevated from all of your hard work. You can be the best manager, the best employee, yeah. and they never yeah. want you to be sitting right next yeah. to them. So, and at a point, like I said, you're, there's a, a feeling that you're going to hit financially wise right? because you're trading hours for for dollars and they're only going to give you so many hours and if it's you're the one that controlling your hours and the dollars then you set the limit yeah. of how much that you can get so yeah. now kudos to you for really uh getting your kids in that mindset because and i have this and, and i've had this conversation with some of my family because some people just don't get that and it, it, it took a shift for me because I've worked in advertising and in advertising agencies and shifting that mindset from giving your time to somebody else to actually putting that time into what you want to do and into yeah. your dreams is a big mind shift that a lot of people aren't able to bridge because right. they need that check or feel or it's been ingrained in them. I need to get a job. I need to work for somebody. That's right, and it and it, it's the same. It's the same. Um, it's not to say that it's bad to get no, a job. No, it's but not. It's exactly. like because if you don't know yeah. anything about business structure or how things work, my problem is I was working for Coles, and I'm challenging my manager as an employee. I'm challenging my manager on how to better, you know, use my time to yeah. to like chop off two two to three hours when I get to work instead of doing this ridiculous thing. What if we did it this way and it'll be, it'll save time. He's like, no, Marcus, we've done it this way for a long time. And I'm like, bro, this is a waste of energy. And then I, it, it was very clear. I'm like, I can't stay in this. I can't stay in an environment where I know I can solve this problem, but yeah. someone else is telling me no. You, you can't. So, no, that was, that was terrible for me. So I got out of that. But if you never, if you've never worked for anyone, you don't understand business. Um, for instance, I worked on a comic um, freelance wise yeah. before understanding how to make this comic, Tuskegee Airs. 
And I, I asked a million questions. I was very attentive uh, on, on asking, how do you do that? Yeah. And they told me, the publishers told me, and that was, that's rare. The publishers were very open and he was like, well, yeah, we print out of here. We do this. This is how you save money. And I was like, word, cool. That's really good information. And I brought it back to my business partner, man. I'm like, yo, we can do this. It's, you know, cost, cost a little money. Yeah. But yeah. we can actually do And now we have a publishing company. We uh, have publishers trying to chase after us and say, can we publish a book? We got great deals. We're like, nah, because we got those same deals. But thank you, though. Uh, we know how to publish. We know how to print. We know how to do this. Um, so. So you're, th- you're really big on, on, and especially with something like, Tuskegee Airs owning that 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 IP owning that property. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and it, and it's it's a labor of love in the sense that we we've had opportunities to take the shortcut, um, where someone is you know doing say oh well we'll take that off of you just give us the rights in perpetuity, you know or we own it or we, yeah we we've had opportunities to take the shortcut um, for money. And it's like, you know, this this is bigger in both of our opinions, uh, me and Greg Burnham. Yeah. Um, it's bigger than just money because we've actually seen people be affected. We've seen kids. We've seen it's all age. We've seen we have a 60 year old cosplayer that that cosplays as uh, Genesis, the one with the, the glasses. Yeah. She, you know, she's never seen a character that looked like her. Yeah. She's yeah. 60 years old. Right. right? Yeah. That's the kind of things where it's like. Maybe we're doing the right thing. So yeah. if we give it away, yeah, if we give it away, if we, we take the, the quick route, it may be bastardized or changed or manipulated to yeah. serve another purpose. Yeah. And we're seeing it absolutely working the way we yeah. want it. But right. yeah, it's 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 not to say we can't work with people or we can't compromise, but there's certain things we have to have to maintain steady as she goes, because it's that's the goal. It's, yeah. it's, it has. Yeah. It's okay for it to be five young black. We've had. We've had. We pitched it to studios. Oh, do they all have to be black? <laughs> yeah. All of, yeah. The pilots. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's okay that they're black though, right? We've had that question, and it's like, oh man, oh man. Uh, and like I said, uh, if you're just tuning in, man, we are having a, uh, like I said, uh, super conversation with my friend Marcus here, and. We're already at the top of the hour, and like oh, I said, no. I haven't even got halfway through <laughs> all the questions. We even dived into Tuskegee Air, so I, I definitely want to be respectful of your time. But like I said, I just there's so many. Trust me, I have so many questions that I want to dive into. Yeah, uh, I just think we got to do part two. That's all that is. We just got to do part two of the interview. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, definitely, and 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 would love to get you back on to do a, a live drawing session as well. Yes, yeah, uh, for sure. That's definitely something I want to do. Um, but I do before, uh, really quick, because like I said, I, I ever I do want to be respectful of your time. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely going to have you back on. But I know I want to dive in quickly into Tuskegee Air um, uh, for sure, and I'm even going to bypass a commercial. That I used to. <laughs> um, uh, cool. uh, I quickly want to play for people uh, just a quick little video to kind of set up uh, Tuskegee Airs for everybody. Um, definitely, it's like I said, that's what caught my attention as I was, you know, come across your profile, just the artwork on it and, and the story behind it, obviously. Um, so I'm going to quickly share my screen and check out this video. It's an awesome little video talking about uh, the Tuskegee Air. Then we're going to quickly kind of dive into that uh, project and a little bit of what you just mentioned, the the older lady that was a cosplayer that said she never seen Carrot. Because I think that's a big thing about and really what makes something like this a powerful, powerful thing because it does – really speak to people that you, you probably you may have thought it would resonate with but just having somebody come up and say it and that's why I got it uh do this show because I know for me it was a powerful image of seeing somebody actually doing what I love to do and characters that look like me so we're going to do a quick little share of my screen here 
Uh, screen share. Uh, share screen. And we're going to play this. Uh, I want to. I want it in full screen. There we go. All right. So let me play this. Uh -oh. There we go. Uh, hold on. I was watching it. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, I just I have so many questions I want to ask you about this uh, for sure. Uh, right off the bat, though, what, why, you know, what was it about the Tuskegee Air that drew you just to this? Yeah, uh, well, it, it didn't. Tuskegee Airs was not something that we were. Uh, me and my business partner were thinking about. Uh, he was doing a, a children's book signing here in Atlanta with, at in one of the local malls, uh, Greg. I had illustrated this children's book uh, back in 2013. So we were just, we were doing a signing at the mall. It was a children's yeah. book uh, event. Uh, an elder gentleman, black gentleman came up to the table. I had my poster sprawled out, but I had the young heroes, um, superhero, uh, black and brown superheroes I'd make young. And I had those on the table. And he's like, this is great, man. This is all good and stuff. But do y'all have anything about aviation? And we was like, no. He's like, man, y'all need to get some. The kids don't know nothing about aviation and history. And I was like, well, I was thinking about doing um, a young heroes version of the Tuskegee Airmen, just making you know some young pilots so kids can see, you know, what that looks like and this that. And he, man, he lit up. He was like, y'all, if you do that, young man, you can get to this, this, and you can go here. You can do that. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. I'll, I'll draw some young Tuskegee Airmen. And so my business partner sitting right next, he's like, man, we need to write that up. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, the young Tuskegee Airmen thing, we need to write a story about that. And I was like, all right, let's do it. And so we took like a week. This was like during Thanksgiving of 2015. And I mean, we just started pitching, you know, to each other, like, how could we do that? We didn't want to disrespect any of the families yeah. by creating, you know, oh, we're going to make the great, 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 great grand person of this real person yeah. um because they're really you know the legacy the tuskegee airmen have real heirs yeah. still yeah. yeah that are still alive and well so we didn't want to do it that way so we came up with the concept well what if we make a brand new cast kids what if we set it in the future from now so this is far removed uh this is you know 80 years into the future from now you have five pilots that are being trained uh based on the all of the dynamics and and you know yeah, uh, things that the Tuskegee Airmen did, and we, we said he was a descendant, but we didn't give him a last name, Colonel Mars. 
is the descendant that's teaching these kids. So they're inheriting the legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen, not, they're, they're not blood descendants. Yeah. So uh, I was like, yo, if it's in the future, we can get some jets to transform the giant robots. <laughs> so, and Greg was like, oh, snap, we could do martial arts. And I was like, oh, I'm designing the weapons. They get futuristic weapons too. So the name came really quickly, you know, Usually we fight over names, so it, it just rolled off uh, Tuskegee Airs. And so obviously that was a play on words still. It, it worked for what they were, you know, what the story yeah. was going to be about. And I did one drawing uh, of what I said, give, I told Greg, give me like a couple of days, let me design it. And the first drawing I did was on sketch. It was just in my sketchbook of Abel leaning on a giant robot, you know, the mech. Uh, that they fly and i posted at the facebook man and people was like if this is what we think it is shut up and take my money and they were like where's the kickstarter where's the kick we was like yeah hold on wait we, this is just the first image we didn't there was no plan for that we were just saying we got this idea so the next one i did had all the kids sitting on p51 mustang and mm. we we created a fan page and got fan following and then we did the kickstarter the following year in uh, January 15th through February 15th and raised 74,000 uh, wow. Kickstarter. So it was ridiculous. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And that was just for the, the comic book, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Nice. So, I mean, how long have you and your partner been working together? Oh man, over 20 years. Uh, okay. We started, we started cause he was looking for a comic artist on a project that he was working on but he couldn't find uh, a comic artist to draw black people authentically and, and, you know, attractively and stuff. So a mutual friend between the two of us introduced us and said, well, and, you know, I'm like, yeah, I draw. He's like, sure. <laughs> I'm drawing. This. So it, it, we linked up back then. This was 99, 2000. Um, so around the same time I started getting freelance for Cartoon Network, um, we started working on, uh, a book called Starving Artist. Yeah. And he was, you know, this was, you know, Greg's baby that he was working on, but I came on and we started storytelling and, and I started adding to that element even then as an artist, but I was still, you know, a writer in my own brain. So adding elements and characters and stuff to it. So we came up with it, we finished it. We was printing the book out of Kinko's. It's a terrible business strategy because it costs us like 10 bucks to print one. Yeah. But we're selling it for like four dollars. Um, yeah, we, we got to put it to a store on consignment, and the book was selling out. And we were at, like we did no advertising, no marketing, anything. We just put it in a store to see if someone would buy it, and people bought it. And the, the, the manager was excited. Hey man, we need, I need like more of those books. He was like, okay, but hold on, because that's fifty dollars for five. Let's just hold on. It was a terrible strategy. So we literally stopped publishing the book and took a break from it for years until we got back into Greg doing his children's books and me working on another comic book yeah. to learn the business of it. And then after I learned it, I was like, hey, man, we can probably do comics now. So let's. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I definitely want to, uh, like I said, uh, learn about uh, that a little deeper. So, yeah. how important, I mean, Obviously, it made a big impact on that woman that is the cosplayer. Yeah. Um, how important for for you and your partner to be putting out content of you know diverse characters, black and brown characters, um, to really you know speak to people that don't normally see characters look like them. Right. It's it's super important, man. It's and it's to me. It's a it's a personal mission at this point because I didn't draw black and brown characters when I was young. That's not what I saw. Yeah. The first comic, the first X-Men comic didn't have black and brown characters. The cartoons that I watched, the, the video games that I played, everything you digest, you know, you, that's yeah. that's what makes you food is the same way. Yeah. Right. But visually, mentally, what you put in, you know, is what you become, what you yeah. start producing. And I didn't draw any black and brown until someone challenged me on it. I said, well, why don't you make a, a superhero that's black? And I was like, and I had to pause because it was like, it, the, the way it made me feel was, but I don't want that. I didn't say that, but that's not what was exciting to me 
And I was like, why not? I literally questioned him. I was like, why not, Marcus? What's wrong with a black kid? You know, black league kid. I was like, yeah. I've never seen it. And I started rationalizing and trying to talk myself into the concept. Like, well, I've never seen that before. None of the cool superheroes and none of the cool action. And I'm like, well, why is that, though? Yeah, that's, that's that? the big question. Why is that? Why is that? And it, it started the path. Working with Greg was really important, too, because all of the characters in his book were black. Mm. Black and brown. Uh, he had an Asian. He was an Asian, Asian yeah. cat in there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he was very influential, too, because I had never worked with a writer before or another creative that said, well, I'm doing this on purpose. Yeah. You know, I'm not doing this to please anybody else. This is for this is what I want to see. So that started our journey as working together in multiple projects, really, um, along that same path. But now, if you if if, it, if you follow my work, if you um, see the characters I create, I'm doing a, a competition about mermaids because it's a month yeah, of May. Yeah, all the mermaids and, that you yeah. have some amazing stuff as well. Yeah. For those that don't know, it's called Mermaid, and it's not my art challenge. It's the internet created, I guess. But all during the month of May, you draw mermaids, right? And I started a couple years ago drawing these, but no one was drawing. Not enough people was drawing black and brown mermaids. Yeah, you know, know, and, him, so, and yeah. I was like, no, I was like, no. <laughs> See, because that's look, that's that, that's that, that's that thing. I started researching. Guess, guess where mermaids came from historically? Where? It's an African tale. It's an African uh, mermaid, but she's not just a mermaid. Uh, Mama Wada is she can actually, you know, uh, turn into a full fish. She can turn into a full snake. That's an African concept that was then cherry picked and said, well, we're gonna make a white lady that's a mermaid. Yeah. But that's African. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's, so no, it's just that's not what we see, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's in it's your very, voice, like you said. If you really dive deep and yeah. deeper into stuff, you'll find yeah. the actual yeah. heritage of where it comes from and things like yeah. that. Uh, right. We're just so used, you know, to seeing. Like I said, I think if you told people, yeah, you know, hey, what do you think Cleopatra looks like? They'll think, you know, uh, yeah. well, Cleopatra was mixed, so it's yeah. fine. She was like, she wasn't, you know, pure yeah. blood. She wasn't pure blood, but she was. Nah, uh, uh, yeah, she lived out there in the sun. A little bit favor. <laughs> right, but that's the stuff. It's, but that's where now the mission has changed to say, what is it? What does it mean? Yeah. So if you're creating anything, hopefully it means something to you. But now, man, like getting the response is wonderful. Uh, when I post something, it really is. I genuinely am humbled that anyone that says they like my art. Because I'm not doing it for them. That's that's the most realest thing I can tell anybody. Yeah, yeah. I didn't draw this for you to give yeah. me feedback. Yeah. I'm sharing it just to share it because it's it's. I feel like it, it can either be of use to someone else, but I've already. It's once it's done, I've already completed the loop for my purposes. I yeah. designed it. I created it for myself first. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to see this. Yeah. I'm putting it online to show y'all what I did for myself. Yeah, art is an internal thing that you satisfy for yourself. Yeah, and like you say, you appreciate everybody that likes it. Yeah, um, and comments and and it moves them or speaks to them in some kind of way. But initially, it has to be something for you that yeah. speaks to you uh, moving forward. Again, um, like I yeah. say. I, I uh, uh, definitely am going to be bringing you back, Marcus. Sure. Because like I said, I, I, I didn't even get through. <laughs> I, like 30, I, I really did. I'm a, I, I write, normally write out a lot of questions, but yeah. I must have had like 30 questions, even more. And I even know that just talking about things, you'll answer this way and it'll take me totally in a different different direction. So definitely didn't get through half of the things uh, that okay. I have to do. Um, but it does give me the opportunity to bring you back on for sure. <laughs> um, and definitely want to get you back on uh, to do like a drawing session. And yeah. uh, or, because like I said, everybody you've seen his, his amazing work and I would just love to see I love seeing it in action. 
And I'm the type of person that I love seeing it in action and, and how you go about working and everything. Right. Um, everybody, you got to got to make sure that you connect with uh, Marcus. Check out his work. More importantly, uh, support uh, the pro the projects that he does because, like I said, that's the only way that that these type of stories and these type of things really uh, get out there is that we have to support it and get behind it. I, wanna, I love throwing up a few uh, comments here and there. Uh, Miss Bernice, I appreciate you. What's up, Bernice? Uh, yes. Jumping in the show. Do you, I mean, a quick question. Do you, like I said, do you feel like you're you're more illustrative in writing or do you like the both sides of the writing and the coming up with the story along with the actual artwork type of person? I like to think I'm the, I'm the, the mirror version of what a professional writer is, which is they write, they write from concept to, you know, describing what a character is and, and or telling a story so someone can understand it, who the character is, right? And that's their, that's their medium. It's an right. art form in itself. I, one, I absolutely admire a writer's ability to say, I'm going to introduce you to a concept of, and you're going to, after you finish, you'll understand. You got to read, you got to read through this though, to see the picture. Yeah. Right. I'm the mirror reverse of that. I can show you the character. I can show you them doing stuff. I can show you their emotions. I can show you them doing action. And then for me as a creative, as I see the character, the story pours out. Out to you. Yeah. Almost instantly, sometimes at the same time. And it's super easy for me because I'm like, oh, he has a, a sword that's a gun. So obviously, you know, this, 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 this happened. This is how he got the gun sword. This is where he goes. This is where he goes. Story starts revealing itself. Absolutely. Yeah. Internally. But then now, so I'll do fan fictions to practice writing and explaining just little segments, little chunks. Yeah. Like two or three paragraphs to say, here's what this image is telling. Here's the story that I'm trying to tell with this with this image. An image can tell it by itself. Or here's the problem. People can interpret what they want from an image, even if it's not what I intended. So I drew two ladies arguing. This is what I drew. This is what I said was happening in the art. The lady looked really upset at the other lady. The other lady in my opinion, was scared in the drawing. I posted it. I didn't write anything to go with it. I just said, this is, the only thing I said was, the character was saying, say it again, I dare you. Yeah. That was the title of the work. People took what they thought it meant, regardless of what I said was in that line, <laughs> and started commenting, well, I think this is sexual tension. I think this, I think they wanted to, I'm like, what? No, I mean, I didn't come out and try to, I didn't tell you they were wrong because they weren't wrong. Yeah. That's how art works. It's perception. Yeah. So I literally said, even though this was not my intention, I'm glad y'all got something out of it. It's, it is what it is to you. So I tell the story, I'll do the fan fiction, a couple of paragraphs to try to like reduce that. If I, if I have a story to go with something, I'll just do a little, little chunks, little nuggets of story to go along with the art. And that's how I can practice as a writer to say, well, here's what I'm not saying with the art. Here's some backstory. Here's some 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 context. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, yeah. gotcha. I mean, do you like both? I mean, is that do you prefer working with a writer to write the comics and you put the visual towards it? Or do you like or the way you and your partner are kind of just bouncing ideas back and forth and come out of it collaboratively? I'm assuming he's a writer, children, yeah. he writes, I'm assuming, yeah. because he wrote, wrote a children's book and stuff. So is that a better way for you to work as opposed to just, uh, I wrote this story and kind yeah. of trying to figure out and work with the, art, the writer to get the visuals of it. Me and Greg are unique as a, as a duo because um, we don't even write comics as they traditionally are. Um, Greg has his own, uh, he's published his own book, Search for Sadaka. Um, and he has to then resort to doing things the way traditional comic writers do. They write a script, very much like a television script or a movie script. 
yeah. dialogue, setting, description. Me and Greg, however, uh, when we come to write a, a story, um, it's a conversation and I'm sketching thumbnails while we're talking and, but we're coming up with, you know, story points, beats, and we're refining what's going to happen. And I'm like, oh, that's dope. Oh, I got something for that. Yeah. Look. And I'm sketching. I'm like, well, hold on. So if this is happening, then what about what's happening in the background? Oh, so-and-so is doing this. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, no, no, we can't do that because, you know, so we're literally talking Talk and refining the concept of what's happening. And I'm thumbnailing, and at the end, Greg looks at my, you know, thumbnails and saying, "Okay, cool. Now draw it." I'm like, shit. That's all. Like, that's he's done, because you know we don't. We, normally, we uh, we'd write a script. We write a rough um, guideline, so to speak. You yeah. Know, that says this is the story beat of issue whatever. So we know what's going to happen throughout, right? But we don't tie down the dialogue hard. Because after I draw it, we both come back and look at it again. Because as a creator and writer, like I said, if I draw something or if I'm drawing, I may actually see something pour out or the story may pour out to say, oh, you know what? I know we sketched this, but this doesn't make sense in context to where the characters are standing. So now I have to move the camera or I have to add something that fixes that problem visually. And now Greg is seeing something new. He's like, oh. So wait, so what is she saying? And, oh, okay, I didn't know that was his, his expression. I was like, yeah, he's this way because this, and I thought this would make more sense. So now we're looking at expressions, people and characters, and now the dialogue is like, okay, so he's saying this, she's saying that, this is saying this, this is that. And now we write the script actively as we see the art. And that's not normal. That's not normal. <laughs> so that's not, the, that's not the standard way to write comics, but I, I enjoy it. I think it's actually really, really helpful creative because okay. Greg trusts me with not having to put parameters. He trusts me enough to visually story tell or, or make decisions sometimes where, and I'll, I'll run it by him. I'm like, hey, I had to add this. Or if, God forbid, we say we have a fight scene, I don't sketch the whole fight scene out while we're talking. I take time and I'm like, oh, I got something dope. It's going to have to be. Uh, the very first issue of Tuskegee Airs, it was supposed to be 22 pages. 22 pages. Uh, it ended up being 30. That was my fault. It was all my fault. Greg was like, what's taking so long? I'm like, shut up. <laughs> okay, we can't have this epic robot battle. It, uh, it's too short. I need, I need time. And 22 pages became 30 because I needed to really let that action okay. play out and breathe. Now he was complaining, but when he saw it, he was like, yeah, that's dope. Okay, cool. You know, he was excited to see it all. And I was like, now, nah, see what I was trying to tell you was this. And he was like, yes, it's fine. Okay, thank God we finished. But it, it took, so now we have a 30 page book for the most part, usually so I can breathe and let the action scenes breathe. With normal comics are 22 pages for the most part, like Marvel DC, yeah, like 22 pages. Um, and they don't have to worry about letting it breathe because they have, 50, yeah, yeah, the 50, yeah, you know, yeah. different stories yeah. coming out every month, every month, every month, and they have the they have the, the capacity to make that happen. But it's just me and Greg. Um, I do hire some help sometimes for coloring and inking. Yeah, but everything else, man, psh, what it's on, it's on. I do art and writing, formatting, you know, getting it ready for the printer, all that lettering, for the book. It's a lot. So wow, wow, and I mean, and I'm assuming. You're fitting this all in freelance work and, and <laughs> work that you, know. you say fitting in. Um, that doesn't mean I'm fitting it in properly. It doesn't always work. Um, it's, it takes a long time for us to get books out because I don't. We we don't pay ourselves like a full time job. Would. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's still we still function uh, in in this very grassroots kind of functionality. When we go on shows, when we sell the book, when we're actually doing a lot of conventions, um, there's there's times where we can actually pay ourselves back. Yeah. Um, as it's not coming, the expenses aren't coming out of our pockets, coming out of the sales. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's you know, I, I still have to pay rent. Um, so yeah, I do take, you know, freelance, I do take this, that, and the other happening. So that does cut into production time, but it's not always gonna be that way. Um, 
we're going to get into animation very soon yeah. in the next couple of months. So I, I, there's no way I could still draw the book full time and mm -hmm. still do this stuff. We're going to get behind an animated series. That's the goal is to make it into a, you know, animate something mm -hmm. that people can yeah. watch, digest, see as a family. And hopefully we broadcast it on Netflix or whoever else yeah. picks it up. But uh, we have to create that. That's not a part-time gig. It's a full-time thing. So we'll see yeah. how that works. Yeah, that's that's going to take a lot. But I definitely uh, look uh, forward to one, bringing you back on once that gets going and definitely yes. pushing that for sure. Um, because I, you know, obviously definitely see this as, as a, a awesome animated. Oh, yeah. That's always been the goal. That's always been the goal from the, that, that November, like I told you, when we started talking about it, yeah. animation was the goal then, but comics are far cheaper in, re <laughs> in relation to saying, yeah. let's just jump to a cartoon and we can control it better. So final question. Well, second to the last final question. <laughs> but, uh, is um, uh, the end goal for you and your partner to curate just your content, or is it to also curate others, you know, be a studio that brings in other stories, or is it more like a kind of like a Tyler Perry, where it's you know, a studio, even though you do other stuff, it's to produce your content? Yeah, for right now, I'd say because we created a pub uh, publishing company. Uh, Air Apparent um, is our publishing company that we publish Tuskegee Airs out of. And yeah, we've had the conversation um, about eventually, yeah, we're, you know, we don't mind publishing someone yeah. else's book, bringing that under our publishing company. Um, right now, though, yeah, it's, it's primarily uh, our creative works, our creative visions being published through it. Um, but it's going to branch out, man. We're going to have to create another company for pub just for, you know, um, production. We have yeah. to create a production company yeah. um, that feeds into the publishing company as well um, to kind of keep things centered. But that's that's definitely where we're at now. Um, as we bring on more talent, and we're going we're going to put feelers out there eventually. But it's it's uh, you know we're working. I've I've targeted a couple of artists and, and designers that are really talented to replace me um, as the you know grunt artist. I'll still be drawing. I'll still yeah. be doing character design. I'll still be writing. Yeah, but. It, it's not it's not scalable for what we want to accomplish as yeah. a company to produce a cartoon to produce all the other stuff we have and, and lined up. We still have to do the business side. Yeah, yeah, and um, you be doing. Yeah, you gotta have to take yourself out of that role. Yeah. Um, and there's there's people that are absolutely passionate, hardcore comic artists. That's what they want to do for life. Yeah. Just like we talking about animators, there's comic artists that are like that. That's yeah. all they want to do. Yeah. That's what they get out of it. So I want to hire those people. And um, make sure that they can. I can step away without having to micromanage someone. If they get the vision, if they have the skill, and they are consistent with that, it's hard for someone. Well, looking from the outside in, we get people saying, "Well, what's taking so long to make the books?" And I'm like, yeah. "That's it's a fair question. Uh, it's not an easy answer." Have you know we run in a business, running a publishing company from two people. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's yeah. all I to say. Yeah. Hey, it's just the two of us, basically. Right, and we can hire out, but again, this isn't our full time. We have to also get money and do yeah. things. But so that's where, yeah, it, it's it's a lot, man. So when it becomes a full time, that's where you'll see we're gonna surprise the world with monthly books, and people are probably not gonna know what to do with it. They probably think we're just storing them up one day, but. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna, you know, produce comics and books, children's books, merchandise, everything. And it's gonna all roll out as a machine would when we get more infrastructure and people and personnel. Okay, to, yeah, because yeah, Microsoft or, you know, look at uh, what's Amazon. Apple's, yeah, Apple's yeah. got the garage. So That's what I'm saying? Yeah. It, 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 they, weren't, they weren't meeting, Amazon wasn't meeting demands like that back yeah. in the day. But yeah. as soon as you build that infrastructure and you actually have it expand and it's, you know, it can actually expand business-wise, the model. Uh, that's when you can actually meet those demands, and we're going to get there, absolutely. Yeah. That's the goal. But definitely, definitely. I see it definitely getting there. Uh, well, like I said, this last question from uh, yeah. Live Space. And actually, it's funny that you said that uh, uh, <laughs> because 
Uh, he's supposed to be, well, one of the owners of, of Lion Forge is supposed to be coming on to the show. Uh, I got a call with him and was able to connect with him. So definitely that kind of uh, uh, business and setup is something that I'm really interested in as well. So, um, but definitely it looks like that's what you and your partner have really kind of started to put together in the seas. And trust me, I understand scalability. It, it's a different thing when you're doing everything yourself, you have to learn if you want your business to scale you got to step out of those roles and step into other roles uh, and bring in people. Last question. Uh, and not that you would change anything, but if you had the opportunity to go back in time and stand in front of your younger self, what would you tell your younger self? <laughs> I've, I've had that. I've had this uh, scenario run by me before. Uh, you got to be more specific, man. It's a lot. I got married. Like I said, it was a great marriage, great life. Uh, a lot of things that I would tell myself different. Uh, well, not, even do, not even to do different, but you, are you meaning as, career, as an career, artist? As an artist. As an artist. Yeah. Because you can tell yourself things, of course, like I said, it's it's broad with personal things, but as an yeah. artist. That's a good one. So I think the, the short short answer is um, I would I would absolutely have a good conversation about the right way to practice to improve because I didn't know that in my early, at, at 20 19 20 years old I drew when I felt like it I drew what I thought was good I drew what I thought felt but I, I didn't understand the proper way to practice uh, for me that I've come up with now there's a there's a problem people say oh just draw and you'll get better it's not necessarily true because if you're only relying on what you know, how are you improving? You'll get better at what you know, but yeah. you will not elevate. You will not get to the next you know, plateau. And that's back to the martial arts thing. Having a teacher or a sensei, someone saying, okay, you've reached this plateau. Now you're gonna elevate to the next grade, now to the next one, right? Um, because that's, you have to actually you know, find those elements of improvement. How do you do that? If you're you you don't have a teacher, so I would have I would go back and say this is how you're going to improve quicker by yourself. Here's how you do this, and you have to do this daily, and not just one time. The more times you do it during a day, the quicker you'll improve. So practicing properly as an artist, what I found is you draw from reference daily. So if Everyone I've talked to as a young artist, oh, it's hard to draw hands. Okay, well, show me your sketchbook. How many times do you draw hands? Well, I don't draw them because they're hard to draw. I was like, <laughs> That's why you haven't improved. You won't improve if you don't actually draw the thing and mm. study it visually and from reference. So that just means, and now that we have smartphones, you know, you take your hand and you take a picture of this image right here, right? Okay. Yeah. If you've never drawn it from that perspective, that's new for your brain. There's a folder, just like a desktop on a computer, in your brain that says, okay, cool. So I'm going to solve all of these problems as it pertains to this view. I've never seen that before, never drawn it. You have to draw it, though. You have to see it, then try to draw it. That's where the learning happens. If you don't draw it after seeing it, it's just an image, just like everything else. It's just noise. All right, draw this. This is your first sketch. Turn it. That's your second sketch. Turn it. Third sketch. Turn it. You know, different. And then turn the light off. Add some shadow. Uh, daily. 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 Now you can draw different different hand you know poses yeah. daily, but from reference, you're seeing it. You can take a picture of it with your smartphone. You can go on Google Images. It doesn't matter where you get it. But your brain is a referencing engine. In relation to art, the, the connection of referencing what you see, trying to understand, because lines don't exist in real life. In this plane of existence, you can look as hard as you want to. Now, these can be considered lines, as you see them on my hand right here, these little palm lines. Yeah. I'm talking about contouring lines around my finger. Don't yeah. exist. I don't have lines on the edge of my neck and face. There's no line on my nose. But if I draw it, guess what I'm putting on top of it? A line. Right. To represent this is the shape of this, this is the shape of that. This is that doesn't exist in reality. So your brain has to reference reality 
and then put lines on top of it. See, so that's doing something that's not natural to the human experience. That takes practice. And so when you see a hand doing a shape, your, your, your brain is saying, now how would I put lines to represent this on paper? Because that's what that's how other people can understand and render. Oh, you're drawing a hand. Yeah. Interesting. I see the lines. I see the shading. Um, that's what you do daily. And you have to do it. If you do it one time a day, you're good. That's practicing once a day. Yeah. It's better than nothing. But if you do it five times per day, if you do it more than five times, whatever, however passionate you want, however quickly you want to improve, do the math, five hand drawings a day for 30 days. A lot of drawings. Right? It doesn't have to be finished. doesn't have to be perfect. doesn't even have to be clean. But your brain is going to recall and recount every single one. Period. It, it doesn't, it's not even a snapshot. It's going to say, oh, I've drawn that before. That's how your brain works. It'll literally say, okay, yeah, I've seen that hand from that perspective. I've seen yeah. this. See, I would tell my young self to do that because I didn't do that for years, more than 10 years. And even though I was seeing things, I was using reference sometimes, but I didn't practice daily. So I could have probably improved, man, 10 times as fast because I love drawing, but I didn't know that. So now that I know that in my almost, I'm about to be turning 40 here this year. So um, yeah, talking to my, you know, 19 year old self or younger, really anytime um, that would have absolutely helped me grow leaps and bounds skill wise and understand. So, gotcha. yeah. so you all heard it from uh, yes. uh, the master <laughs> practice, practice, practice. <laughs> We're going to Marcus. Like I said, uh, I want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, we went way over time, <laughs> way, way over time. Uh, I cool. I still think that you got Sean uh, Bellinger. I think was at two hours, so you, yeah, he's still the reigning king. Yeah, we, yeah, we're working on it. We're gonna work on it next time. <laughs> I, I want to thank you so much for being on the show because, like I said, I could sit and and talk with you for hours because I love. Like I said, we're kind of this kinder spinner about what we love and and just what we do. So I definitely plan on having you back on the show, not only uh, to interview, but to have you like do a live drawing session yeah. for sure. I think would be really cool. Everybody uh, make sure that you connect with Marcus, uh, check him out. Uh, his, uh, he has a uh, website for his work, Marcus, the visual.com connect with him there. You'll see a lot more of his great work. You'll for sure see it on Instagram. Tuskegee Airs, he has an Instagram. This is such an amazing project. I'm super pumped to see it animated myself um, to see where it goes. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. uh, Facebook page, check out the Facebook page for it. Um, make sure, we want to make sure we support it because like I said, that definitely helps to get projects like these out and yeah. the only way they're going to get out is this kind of way marcus the visual check his instagram page out and all these links will be in the show note for sure um and make sure you connect with him again uh his uh, facebook page marcus the visual he's also on twitter uh at marcus the visual as well uh, we have uh like i said uh, a lot of great comments that have come in. Uh, definitely want to close out with those, Miss Bernice. Yeah, that I, didn't, I didn't have the comment section up. I was looking at the, okay, my bad. Yeah, we had a lot of comments. I just, I was so busy yammering on it to get that <laughs> to uh, uh, throw them in there. Definitely, like I said, the, the new format of the show is definitely going to allow me to, to get more interactive and throw things up nice. and make things so much easier. So I'm super excited. Uh, Mr. Live Space, great uh, uh, interview as well. Great advice. Really, he uh, really did great advice. Uh, give some great advice there, Marcus. And like I said, I definitely want to sit and talk with you even outside the show about the whole process of, of 
pulling comics and everything together. So super excited for oh. Yeah, on that you. note, I guess I can I can say so. There's a a, a virtual com- virtuous con. If you haven't heard of that, virtuous con is a, it's a virtual comic convention, mm-hmm. and um, it's going to be coming. Gosh, it's in a couple weeks. A couple weeks, I want to say during June. Sure. Um, yeah, and so uh, Juneteenth. I'm sorry, 19th. Um, they're going to do a convention during that weekend. So um, the cool thing is we're doing a, a workshop. Me and Greg are going to be doing a workshop. Awesome. Uh, we're going to be talking about the process of publishing comics and selling comics. Really? I'm also going to do, yeah, I'm going to be doing a workshop talking about character design. So you'll be seeing me do that. I believe you can uh, register for Virtuous Con. Um, actively now. Sure, yeah, make sure. Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, do you have the link now that you could throw <laughs> into the chat? I do. Uh, that way I, I can, I can, I can find it. Let me yeah, see if I can put it into the private chat. That way I can add yeah. it to the show notes. Um, because I definitely want to attend that as well. Um, and actually, it's funny. That's how I connected. Well, it, uh, King's Tune, I connected with the, the owner of Lions Forge. Uh, yeah. through, they were doing a uh, King's Tune kind of festival, uh, like five-day festival. And he was doing a, a workshop or a talk, panel talk. And it's yeah. just, animation and comics and cartoons for uh people out of kingston jamaica because yeah. obviously uh it's starting to grow down there but uh definitely uh all right good and i'm gonna put this in the uh chat as well so that you can uh yeah. register for it because i'm definitely gonna register for it myself yeah. uh, it's, it's really dope it's real dope because they she has um it's real cool because you have virtual tables and you have like a, you know, you, you log onto the website once you're there during the convention and you can click on a table, double click and go inside and talk to vendors, the, like virtually. Wow. So it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. Really cool. I'm looking forward to it, man. And really, lo- yeah. and, love, and we really would love to have your partner on. Uh, yeah. Talk about that. And that, I didn't think about that till earlier that I said, man, it would be cool to have both of them on. Look, look Ishmael, Ishmael know what he does. Ishmael talks <laughs> to both. Look, Ishmael Street talks to both of us. That's that's the, uh, that's the homie right there. Um, yeah, yeah. It's it's no. He's he's um, he's just as informed, man. It's uh, the cool thing is we both love sharing. Um, like there's there's all of this this stuff that we know other independent creators are trying to get the get the skinny on, right? And yeah. Yeah. We both, me and Greg, both despise the mentality to say, "Well, just figure it out, young blood." You like, yeah. you, but understanding how to do something the right way. Yeah, yeah. You can buy. You can help someone bypass months and months right, of yeah. just turmoil and trouble. So, uh, yeah. Again, uh, Mark, I appreciate you uh, so much, brother, and definitely yeah. going to be reaching out to you uh, to, like I said, not only you know t- talk to you. Yeah. More personally, but have you back on the show? Oh, and, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll get Greg on here too, so we can all we can all chop it up. <laughs> but thank cool. for uh, from uh, Mr. Live Space to the brothers and sisters dropping gems for others to learn. Hey, it's all about uh, helping each other up. And like I said, if you can uh, shave years off of somebody, and I think I think anybody that's truly successful, any truly successful person. Yeah. Um, that's really got a good heart, success leaves uh, trails, and they have no problem sharing their success yeah. to help somebody else along the way. And I think Absolutely. that's uh, what it's really all about. Uh, everybody, uh, please uh, give my guest a uh, warm. I've had you on here long enough, and I usually ask people to kind of hang around uh, the green room. I'm not going to do that with you because, like I said, yeah. I've had you on here a little bit longer than uh, yeah. attended, but thank, thank you. you. Thank you as well, brother. I really appreciate it, man. Um, I've watched, I watched a couple of the other shows, man, uh, that you've done and listened to, listen to the podcast, um, you know, similar to Ishmael. Um, and I say, I- I'm thanking you for this. This is like I said, at the beginning, you guys are highlighting people, um, that have a message, have experience, have, that are doing things that maybe is seen as, oh, that's not common. But it is common. You just, they're not highlighted. Yeah. And they're not highlighted. So um, you, I appreciate your, your your efforts, bro. I definitely appreciate you uh, reaching out. Thank um, you. Hopefully Thank this you. helps anybody that listened to it. It's, it's, uh, 
but that's, that's why yeah, you're, you're, what you're doing is just as important it as the information I'm sharing because I, I couldn't reach these people without your head without the help. So I appreciate yeah. you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, and that's uh, the main reason why I did it because I know how it was for me seeing right. somebody and really uh, connecting with uh, somebody that looks like me. It really shares uh, that kind of passion. So. Cool. Again, I'm going to be reaching out to you real soon to have you back on, Marcus. I yeah. appreciate you tuning, uh, jumping on and being a part of the Color of Motion family. Everybody, show them some love and uh, look out. Make sure you go to the show notes to connect, uh, and uh, we will have you back on for sure. All right. Thank All right. you, brother. Take it easy, y'all. Thank, Thank you. Guys, it's uh, it's been like I said. I could sit and talk to Marcus uh, for hours and hours and hours because I have a passion for cartoons, comics, and and everything like that myself. So I could just sit and talk with him for hours, and definitely going to be uh, connecting with them to kind of learn the skinny on really what it takes to uh, put not just a, a publishing company, but a media company, because like I said, they're wanting to get into uh, not just uh, books, but animation as well. So we definitely share that same kind of flair and uh, passion for putting out just creative content, whether it be through comics or whether it be through uh, books, toys, games, what, uh, video games, uh, animation, film and whatnot. So that type of thing we, we share and have a passion for. Everybody, like I said, I appreciate you so, so much for hanging in there. This has been a long, long one for sure. Uh, uh, way longer than I had intended. So uh, big thanks to Marcus for hanging in there and, and, and sticking with me for sure. I appreciate that. Uh, next week's show is going to be just as good, and I'm super excited to have uh, Miss Scarlett Blackwell on game development engineer uh, coming out of Savannah College of Art and Design. So really looking forward to sitting down and talking with her uh, about her passion and love for game development, engineering, and no less, not the, on the you know, design side, but uh, on the back end side, developing it. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, you know the drill. We're here every uh, Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. And again, I am super, super, super excited uh, to be unveiling soon the new kind of show and new kind of format and everything. It's going to be so, so much easier, um, the things I'm going to be able to do. So Super uh, looking forward to laying that out uh, in the next coming weeks. Again, I appreciate everybody tuning in. Make sure that, uh, again, one last time, you go to my YouTube channel to check out not only this great episode, but just all the other great past episodes. This was a super one for sure. Um, and definitely make sure that you go to check out the show notes, connect with Marcus, Connect, uh, make sure you sign up for the uh festival because it's the, the Comic Con or the on virtual Comic Con because it looks like it's going to be a good one and I'm going to sign up as well, uh, to be a part of it for sure. Uh, and he threw up the, the Instagram virtual con, uh, virtuous con, so definitely going to be uh putting that information in there to share with everybody. Make sure you sign up. Make sure you connect with Marcus. Check out a lot more work. Like I said, I didn't put up half of his stuff that he, uh, half of the artwork that he has. Um, it's just amazing. So with that, and uh, extra, extra long show, but it was, it was totally awesome for me. Just totally awesome for me. Um, I am going to close this out, and I look forward to seeing you uh, back here next week. You know same uh, bat time, same bat channel, for sure. And with that, I'm going to close it out. Have a great rest of the day. Have a great rest of the weekend. Have a productive week and be nice. And I will see you next week. Peace and love.